and the defendant's statements, all of which would be incriminating to the defendant. This is just some of the competent evidence that the state would introduce at trial. The whole of that evidence would establish the following facts, Your Honor. On Wednesday, February the 14th, 2018, the defendant, Nicholas Jacob Cruz, contacted Uber and had a driver drive him to Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School located at 5901 Pine Island Road in Broward County, Florida. The defendant had with him a rifle bag which contained his Smith & Wesson M&P 15 caliber 5.56 rifle, which is an AR-15 type rifle. He had a backpack that contained a tactical vest that had pockets for firearm magazines. The defendant brought with him uh, to Marjorie Stoneman Douglas 11 firearm magazines. He directed the driver to, of Uber to drop him off at Pine Island Road in front of the pedestrian gate located on the northeast side of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. The defendant walked through the pedestrian gate and made his way to the 1200 building. The defendant, Nicholas Cruz, had previously attended Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. He approached the 1200 building, which is located on the northeast corner of the campus. It is the only three-story building on the campus of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. He entered the east doors of the 1200 building. The 1200 building has 10 classrooms on each floor, six classrooms on uh, the north, uh, on the south, and four classrooms on the north. Uh, that's on each floor of the three-floor building, on the third, three-story three building. Upon er entering the east doors of the 1200 building, Nicholas Cruz turned right and walked into the east stairwell of the 1200 building. He then proceeded to take out his rifle from the rifle bag and loaded it with one of the magazines. As the defendant was loading the magazine into his rifle, a student walked into the east stairwell and the defendant said to him, you better get out of here, something bad is about to happen. The defendant then entered the, uh, stair, uh, the hallway at approximately 221.33 and he fired his rifle at four students who were in the hallway. Three of the students were in front of classroom 1215 on the south side of the hallway. Gina Montalto was sitting outside the classroom of 1215 working on her computer. Martin Duque Aquiano and Luke Hoyer were standing next to her, knocking on the classroom door to gain entrance. Ashley Baez was further west walking down the hallway uh, towards the west doors. The defendant fired his rifle at Gina Montaldo, Martin Duque Aquiano, and Luke Hoyer. They were all shot. Ashley Baez was shot in the leg, but she managed to run to a classroom 1210 across the hall. Ashley Baez survived her wounds. The defendant then turned and fired uh, into the classroom uh, window door of classroom 1216 uh, on the north side of the hallway. He then knelt down in the hallway, took off his backpack, pulled out his tactical vest, put the vest on, loaded another magazine, and he crossed the hallway to the south side of the hallway once again to classroom 1215 and 1214, which are both adjoining classrooms. He again fired into Gina Montaldo, Martin Duque Aquiano, and Luke Hoyer. Gina Montaldo, 14 years old, who was sitting in the hallway in front of class, uh, classroom 1215, was shot four times and died of her wounds. Martin Duque Aquiano, 14 years old, was shot eight times and he died of his wounds. Lou Coyer, 15 years old, was shot tight twice and he died of his wounds. The defendant then began firing uh, through the glass window again into 1214. Then he went across the hall, placed another firearm magazine in his rifle, returned to 1214 and fired once again into classroom 1214. Six of the students in classroom 1214 were shot. Helena Ramsey, 17, year old, 17 years old, was shot four times and she died of her wounds. Nicholas Storette, 17 years old, was shot three times and Nicholas died of his wounds. Isabel Checker, Danielle Menescule, Samantha Grady, Samantha Fuentes were wounded but they survived their wounds. The defendant then walked east in the hallway and once again fired uh, through the classroom window door of classroom 1216. 
He shot eight students in classroom 1216. Alex Schachter, 14 years old, was shot twice, and he died of his wounds. Elena Petty, 14 years old, was shot four times, and she died of her wounds. Alessa Alphadeth was shot eight times, and she died of her wounds. William Olson, Justin Colton, Genesis Valentin, Alexander Durrett, and Keshava Magaporium were wounded, but they survived their wounds. The defendant went back across again to 1214, and he fired into 1214 once again. He was, uh, as he was doing that, Coach Christopher Hickson opened the west doors of the first floor hallway and ran in to see what was happening. The defendant fired his rifle at Christopher Hickson, hitting him twice. Christopher Hickson wounded, crossed, uh, crawled across the hallway, and hid in one of the alcoves on the north side of the hallway. The defendant then walked up to classroom 1213 on the north side of the first floor hallway and fired through uh, the glass uh, door in the, uh, the glass in the classroom door. Carmen Shentrup, 16 years old, was shot three times and she died of her wounds. Madeline Wilford was shot multiple times, but she survived. Samantha Mayer was shot multiple times, she survived. And Benjamin Wickander was shot multiple times, but he survived. The defendant then continued west down the first floor hallway, and as he passed Christopher Hickson, who was hiding in the alcove, he fired once again into Christopher Hickson. Coach Hickson was shot three times, and he died of his wounds. The defendant then entered the west stairwell, and as he entered the west stairwell, there is a door to the west stairwell. And coming in through the door on the west stairwell, which coast was Coach Aaron Feist, as Coach Aaron Feist opened the door, the defendant fired twice into Coach uh, Feist, who fell by the west stairwell door. Coach Feist died of his wounds. The defendant then went up the west stairwell and entered the second floor hallway. As, as he uh, went down the hallway, he fired into classroom 1231, which was empty, which was on the north side of the hallway. He then crossed the hallway and fired to classroom 1234. So on the south side of the hallway, that classroom was also empty. He then walked up to the east stairwell and he walked up the stairs. Due to the percussion from the defendant firing his rifle, the dust from the ceiling tiles uh, caused the fire alarm system to sense smoke, causing the fire alarm to sound. Because the fire alarm was sounding, the students and the teachers were evacuating their classrooms due to the fire alarm sounding. The defendant, upon reaching the third floor, as he exited the stairwell, he fired into Scott Beagle, who was a classroom teacher in 1256. Scott Beagle was shot four times, and Scott Beagle died of his wounds. The defendant then fired at another teacher, Stacy LaPelle, who was out in the hallway with Scott uh, Beagle. Uh, she was wounded, and, but she survived her wounds. She was a classroom teacher in classroom 1255. As the students and teachers were running back to their classrooms, the defendant placed another magazine into his rifle and proceeded to fire. He shot Meadow Pollock, who was hiding in an alcove, uh, of classroom 1249, along with Carol Logren, as they hid in that alcove. The defendant then shot down the hall Anthony Borges multiple times. Anthony Borges survived his wounds. Marion Kabachenko was shot, but he survived his wounds. Kyle Lehman was shot, and he survived his wound. The defendant uh, continued to fire as he moved down the hallway, shooting Meadow Pollock, Carol Longren, Joaquim Oliver Padoy, Peter Wang, and Jamie Guttenberg. The uh, defendant continued further west in the hallway, and as he approached Meadow Pollock and Kara Longren, who were still in the hallway, lying on the floor in the alcove of 1249, fired into them once again. Meadow Pollock, 18 years old, was shot six times, and she died of her wounds. Kara Longren, 14 years old, was shot three times and died of her wounds. The defendant then approached the alcove of the men's bathroom on the north side of the hall. Lying wounded on the floor in front of the men's bathroom door was Joaquim Oliver Padoy. The defendant once again fired into Joaquim Oliver Padoy, 
Joaquim Oliver Padoy was 17 years old. He was shot four times, and he died of his wounds. The defendant then approached Peter Wang, who was wounded and laying just outside the hallway of the west stairwell. Peter Wang was 14 years old. He was shot 12 times, <clears throat> and he died of his wounds. Jamie Guttenberg, 14 years old, as she was running down the hall, she was able to reach the door on the west side of the hallway. She was shot, and she died of her wounds. The defendant then entered the teacher's lounge, which is on 1240, which was on the north side of the hallway. And he fired five rounds outside the west window. The window overlooks a courtyard in the parking lot. He then turned and fired out of a south window that looks over a courtyard. Uh, he fired 10 shots in total. He then ran out of 1240 and went into the west stairwell, uh, took off his vest that still contained five firearm magazines. He laid his gun down and he ran out of uh, down the stairs and out of the 1200 building on the west side and he left the 1200 building at 2.27.55 p.m. He then ran and blended with, in with students who were evacuating the campus due to the fire alarm. Uh, as he walked away he, uh, into a residential neighborhood, he was arrested at 3.49 p.m., uh, approximately three miles away from our 